Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Zane Asher, and I'm an anchor at CNN International. I'm super proud to say that I have my dream job. I wake up every day, and I am so excited to go to work. Um, but my life wasn't always this way, and I do want to share a little bit about my background to help hopefully motivate and inspire some of you. So I'm an anchor at CNN International now, but about four, four and a half years ago, I was working as a receptionist. And the reason why I share that is because I want to let you know that success is never really in a straight line. There's always going to be bumps along the way. So for the longest time in my life, I always believed that hard work was the key to success. I thought, you know what, if you work hard, of course you're going to be successful. Um, but now I realize that there is so much more to the story. There are plenty of people who work hard who don't necessarily make it in their chosen careers. There are plenty of people who are extraordinarily talented, um, who know the right people, who are well-educated, who don't necessarily make it. So if it's not always hard work, then what then determines whether you're going to be successful? As I attempt to answer this, I want to share with you a little bit about my life and my background. I was born and raised here in London. Um, my family and I were originally from Nigeria. The worst and probably most difficult day in my life was September 3rd, 1988. I was about five years old. And my mother and I were in the kitchen in our house in London. We'd just gotten back from a wedding in Nigeria. And my brother and my father were still in Nigeria a few days after the wedding for a road trip. Um, father and son road trip, and they were supposed to come home on September 3rd, 1988. So we were supposed to pick them up from the airport. And we were waiting and waiting, and I guess we assumed that they had missed their flight. We continued to wait, and we didn't hear anything. And then later on that day, my mother got a phone call from a family friend in Nigeria, and the voice on the other end of the line just basically said, you know, um, your husband and your son have been involved in a car crash. One of them is dead, and we don't know which one. So... Uh, the car crash happened in Nigeria, and it was about, there was about five people in the car. Everyone in the car died instantly, apart from one person in the back seat where my father um, and my brother were sitting. It turned out to be my father who died. My mother was pregnant at the time. Of course, she was devastated because my parents were really the loves of each other's lives. So I was raised in a single parent family. For a while, my mother sent me to live in Nigeria by myself with my grandmother. And when I came back, she decided that, you know, in life, if you want to be successful, you have to be able to relate to people from all walks of life. So she deliberately sent me to various types of schools. I went to school in Nigeria. I went to a state school in a poor neighborhood in South London. I went to a private school, and then I went to a boarding school. And this was on purpose, deliberately, because my mother felt that uh, if you want to make it in life, you need to be able to relate to everybody. So when I was 16, um, I have a strict Nigerian mother, but when I was 16, um, she decided that she wanted me to go to Oxford. And she sat down and she thought, okay, how can I guarantee that my child is going to get into Oxford? What can I do to make that happen? And she thought about it for a few days, and she came up to me with a proposal, and she said that she was going to ban me from watching any television for 18 months. <laughs> so um, I was only allowed to watch B BBC and CNN International. If I wanted to watch anything else, I had to ask special permission for that, um, and then no television expanded into no phones, no cable, no music. I literally had nothing else to do but study. And my mother said to me, the only way, if you're living in my house, the only way you're ever going to be able to watch television again is if you get into Oxford. <laughs> so, I mean, we laugh now, and it is funny, but, you know, her plan worked. Um, I worked very hard, my, I got straight A's, and then I went to Oxford. So overall, I didn't necessarily have the easiest childhood. I was raised in a single-parent family. Uh, we didn't have much money. I changed schools constantly, therefore found it difficult to make friends. So I didn't have the easiest childhood, but I loved every minute of it because it prepared me for real life. Um, as I mentioned, especially after having gone to Oxford, and I went to grad school as well in New York, Columbia, I really believed up until that point that hard work was the key to being successful. And now I realize there's a lot more to the story. I'm going to share with you what I think is more to the story. The first thing I believe is trust your struggle. This is something I'd heard a lot. Trust your struggle. And that means no matter what the hardships are you're going through in life, have faith that it will all end up being for the greater good. So I mentioned that four, four and a half years ago, I was working as a receptionist, and I was in a production company in California. And I was a receptionist, so I really wanted to sort of move up within the company. And no matter how hard I worked, I couldn't get promoted. 
no matter how many times I stayed late or came in on the weekends, hoping that my boss would notice me and promote me, it never happened. And in fact, um, for the position I wanted, they began looking for external candidates. I'm sure anyone who's been through that knows how that can be. And uh, because I was the receptionist, it was my job to serve water to the people who were coming in to interview for the job that I wanted. <laughs> I know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. And so I didn't really necessarily feel good about myself because of that, and I, I did some soul-searching, and I asked myself, okay, well, what do you really want to do in life? Because clearly this is probably not meant for you. What do you really want to do? And I'd always been passionate about broadcast journalism. So I called a television station in New York, a local news station, and I asked them, what do I need to do to get a job with you guys? So unfortunately, I didn't have any experience. Um, they needed about two or three years previous experience as a reporter, and all I, the only experience I really had was answering phones and, and sending faxes. That's all I really knew how to do. And so they said no repeatedly to me. And on top of that, I had a British accent. Um, and in America, if you want to get into the local news business, it's very difficult if you have a foreign accent. Uh, it's a lot easier in national news, but certainly in local news, it's a lot harder. Um, so they said no, and I decided I wasn't going to take no for an answer. So I basically called in sick to work, and I paid my roommate, my housemate, a, a few hundred dollars or whatever, and, um, I, and, and they helped me, they helped film me around Los Angeles, sort of acting like a reporter. I studied reporters inside out. I studied everything that they did inside out, and I put together various packages, which is sort of voiced over pieces that I learnt um, basically from studying various reporters, and I sent it to this news station, hoping that they would give me a chance. Unfortunately, a lot of these news stations received thousands of applications, thousands of tapes, so it took them several months to get back to me. And during that time, the recession kicked in and I lost my job. So there I was, no money, no job. Uh, so I decided anyway that I was going to move to New York and just hope that this one station would get back to me. So eventually, after emailing and pestering constantly, they eventually got back to me. They brought me in for an interview, and they were so impressed that even though I had no experience, that I'd put together this tape by myself showing what I could do, that they hired me on the spot. So, thank you. So that's why I say, I say trust your struggle. <laughs>